welcome back to Talk. In this new series, I guess you'll see what is pretty much the mixture as before. Some consumer motoring, some road tests obviously, some road safety items, a look at some components. If you're not used to Talk, in other words, if you're new to it, that's what it's about. I guess there will be, for this program, a, a general overriding philosophy that concerns itself with economy. Economy generally, but more specifically, the economy of fuel conservation, which has become, of course, very important to us. You might like to subtitle it, Motoring for the 1980s. To begin the series, we've chosen Holden's VC series Commodore. The Commodore has been on the market in Australia now for over 18 months. This is the very first facelifted version and it varies very little. It's slightly different on the external appearance, but some fairly significant mechanical changes which we'll deal with in the very near future. Just now we're at Lang Lang, General Motors Holden's proving ground, not far from Melbourne. What better place to test a car which was developed on this very area? And we are on a high speed, constant speed loop, hence I'm just going round and round. So much constant speed, in fact, that it's possible to drive on this loop without having to steer the car because the speed itself will hold the groove. By the same token, it doesn't achieve very much, so perhaps we should go and do something more important. When the Commodore was first released on the Australian market, it really did cause a bit of a stir. Here was, perhaps, the first all-Australian constructed motor car with the sort of features that people have been waiting for for years, with compactness, with efficiency, with a number of inbuilt safety features, and at the price that most people could afford to buy. Something with a great deal of appeal, and General Motors, of course, were immediately laughing because they'd scooped the pool. The Commodore uses a revised form of Holden's radial tuned suspension in an attempt to provide the best mixture of handling and ride. Handling, incidentally, is a combination of factors which includes road holding and steering response. And Holden's used to be infamous for their rolly, slushy understeer, but no more. Handling also includes the degree of body roll, pitch and sway. The right combination of all these contributes very greatly to your safety. And in all these areas, the Commodore is really very good. It's also worth noting that even at speed, interior comfort levels and ride are both very acceptable. And that's something to keep in mind for long trips because it means less fatigue for driver and passengers. But over 100 kilometres per hour or so, there is some irritating wind noise. Time for us to try the brakes, another area in which General Motors were never very good. Now that's really good and that's what I like to see actually. There's, uh, that's a maximum effort stop with no lock up at all, which is great. It means that despite the fact that we have a balance of disc and drums, that they really are well set up and they stop extremely well. The point is, I also happen to know that they go on stopping well as well. So, nice move for General Motors, good stoppers. Incidentally, could I please ask that you don't all write letters saying that nobody ever drives the way we drive and therefore these tests are unrealistic. It's worth bearing in mind that it is necessary to do such things as stress testing, that is to take the car close to its ultimate limits. And that's what this is all about and if we didn't do it that way we wouldn't be able to get the information we really need to pass on to you. Okay, now we're finished with bitumen, we'll take it on the dirt for a bit and see how it performs there. And I can tell you that probably the best feature of the Commodore is its suspension, which really is very good indeed. Under harsh acceleration, there's a slight amount of axle tramp on uphill inclines, but 
generally speaking, the coil spring rear end and the independent front suspension handle these sort of conditions very well. However, while they are doing so, one other small but significant feature rears its ugly head, and that is that for some reason or another, General Motors have not done a particularly good job with the gear shift mechanism in the Commodore, and it's a bit lumpy and a bit notchy and a little bit hard to use. And it is here, under these sort of conditions, where you have to shift gears quite often, that you begin to notice that it's not all that pleasant. And frankly, since it's only a sequence of linkages, it's not something that would be terribly hard to fix. And I would suggest that GM should take a look at it fairly soon, because these days, the ease of driving a car is one of the major points in selling it. Now that we're back in town and therefore back to the realities of normal day-to-day -day motoring, it's time for me to tell you that this particular Commodore is powered by the 2850 six-cylinder engine. Now it's also important to say that during the facelift, most of the changes that were made to the Commodore have been made to the engines, and they include such things as revised carburation, uh, new manifolding, inlet and exhaust, and high energy electronic ignition. And those things were done with the purpose in mind of improving performance, that is power output, and as well, giving greater economy. That sounds like a contradiction in fact, because it's often difficult to achieve both figures, but General Motors Holdens have achieved both better performance and better economy, and they claim somewhere between 7 and 15% improvement in economy and around 20% improvement in performance. That simply means that you'll get better economy than you had before, but in my opinion, it's still not good enough. I like the Commodore. I think it has the makings of a very good car. A couple of things to do though, and one in particular worries me. The 2.8 litre six cylinder engine in the Commodore is around 20 years old in its present form, and a good deal older than that as a design concept, and it's probably time for a complete new engine. Other people have made engines of the same sort of capacity, which are a great deal better in terms of both performance and economy. General Motors sticking with the old engine and progressively revising it year after year after year after year ultimately has its limitations. Let's look at a few facts. Even in its present revised form, this engine gives barely enough power. Certainly enough for normal motoring, but you'd need a little more if you wanted to overtake rapidly and sometimes a little more response for reasonable acceleration. And as well, I'm not sure about you, but I don't think that figures of 13 to 17 litres per 100 kilometres are enough in this day and age. And incidentally, that variation will depend on how you drive and what sort of configuration you build into this car. 